Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from Red Adolescence and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well and I hope you're enjoying the holidays thus far. In today's video, I'm going to be letting you know if I think Ancre Noir by Lalique is still worth it in the year 2020. So make sure to stay tuned. Now before I begin this video and I tell you whether or not I think Ancre Noir by Lalique is still worth it in the year 2020, I know it's been quite a few years since it's been released, I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, if you like fragrance reviews or videos like these here on YouTube, but also top 10 lists, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, interviews, and pretty much anything having to do with fragrances, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner. And of course, while you're at it, please make sure to enable notifications by clicking on that bell icon. This way, whenever I do put out these videos, they will get delivered straight to your feed. Now, is this fragrance still worth it in 2020? A lot of times when you think of fragrances that came out many years ago, some as much as a decade ago, we start to think to ourselves, is there a more modern or relevant perfume on the market that could possibly fit my needs better than a fragrance that's been around for 10 years, 20 years, whatever the case may be. So today we're going to be taking a look at a Natalie Lorson composition. And this one is Ancre Noir, the fragrance that is said to smell like black ink. And this is a very interesting fragrance. I know I discovered it quite a few years back. If you are interested in picking this fragrance up, I want you to know you can pick it up at fragrancebuy.ca. I'm going to leave all of the information down below. They're actually currently running a promotion and it's a Boxing Day sale. It does expire at 11.59 p.m. on the 27th. No exceptions. There's a lot of information and a few codes, so I'm going to leave them down below. Definitely make sure to check it out and take advantage of it before the sale expires. I actually found a 100 ml bottle of it on their website, a tester that comes with a cap for just 19 bucks. And so that is the price of like a specialty cocktail at a bar here in New Jersey. So you can get this one for a really good price. But let me tell you if it's worth it first. So I'm taking a look at five parameters and a set of criteria. So we have the uniqueness. We have the um, accessibility of the formula. We're going to be taking a look at, you know, any reformulations, the integrity of the formula and any alternatives that could possibly be on the market, the price, yada, yada, yada. So let's start things off. First up, we have the uniqueness. Now, now, when this fragrance came out, boy, it was a very unique fragrance. There was nothing quite on the market that smelled the way that this one does. And to this day, like the only fragrance I could possibly compare this to is a fragrance by Chanel. I'm sure you're aware of it. It's called Sycamore. And that fragrance is very green and earthy and verdant. And it has a lot of pizzazz and a lot of character to it. And I really do appreciate it. It's also very long lasting. And it's actually my favorite right next to Cora Mandel. And I know Boy is quite good as well, but they have a lot of really good fragrances. But this one came out way before the Chanel fragrance, if I'm remembering correctly. And so in terms of uniqueness, this definitely earns a lot of points. And this one is also quite long lasting on my skin. So it's not like there's another fragrance out there that overshadows it in terms of smelling better or having better performance or anything like that. So, and to this day, I think it's still quite unique. Of course, there are a lot of other vetiver based fragrances on the market. Some are on the soapy clean side, some are on the dark and rooty side. This is definitely one of the darker expressions with like cypress and some woodsy notes. And so I do still find this fragrance to be quite unique, even among today's olfactory landscape, if you will. It's still quite unique. Now, in terms of alternatives, the fragrance is so cheap and so inexpensive that there is really not a need for an alternative or a clone or anything like that. If we're taking a look at something like a Santal 33, a Baccarat Rouge 540, a Creed Aventus, you're going to see a plethora of clones on the market. But for something like Ancre Noir, there's no need to clone it. Although I have seen some more expensive fragrances release their version of Ancre Noir, their own twist of the formula, if you will. But then, you know, if you can get something tantamount or similar to it in smell and performance at a much cheaper price range, then I would say you're better off just getting Ancre Noir. But I should mention that there are a couple of flankers, right? There's the extreme flanker, if I'm not mistaken. There's also a sport flanker. Both of them are pretty good. But I would say if there is a significant price differential between the original and the extreme, 
just get the original, right? If you really like the DNA and you don't mind it being a little bit denser and darker and deeper, then get the extreme version. However, I really do like the original and so I'm gonna continue to wear this one as I've had it in my collection for a number of years and I do revisit it time and time again just to remind myself of what it smells like because again like I said it's such a unique aroma and it's one that I do quite enjoy especially right around this time of the year we are in the midst of winter next we have reformulations or the integrity of the formula I have heard from some people online that the formula has been tweaked and altered and modified as of late and people are complaining that they don't get that great performance with it and so whereas before maybe you would have been able to get like eight hours from it now people are saying they're getting six hours from it that's negligible uh, in my opinion and especially if you're paying like 20 bucks or 25 bucks for it i don't mind reapplying maybe five hours into the day um, especially if you're just going to do like two or three sprays just to get the freshness of the opening or you know that um strength of the opening because i i don't want to use the word fresh as it's not a fresh fragrance right it's very dark and vetiver heavy and with cypress and woods um but for the price honestly it doesn't really matter to me i could reapply uh, a few times throughout the day and it's not really going to break the bank and of course that does bring us to the next category which is price right so like i said i did find one on fragrancebuy.ca uh it was a tester with a cap $19 and change. Now, if you want, I think a brand new one, it's like $28 or something like that. And this might also be before the use of any coupons. And so, yeah, you can pretty much find this dirt cheap online. And so regarding the price, it has been significantly discounted from the time of its release up until today. And so I think this is something that is only working in the favor of the perfume. And then last up, we have modernity. This one was way ahead of its time. I think it's worth mentioning that. When you're taking a look at a lot of darker expressions in the perfume world, it's only as of late that perfumers and brands have gotten a lot more comfortable being a bit more avant-garde and expressive in a much more um, dark way when it comes to their perfume creations. And so you'll see a lot of leather-based perfumes, you'll see a lot of smoky perfumes utilizing notes of birch and tar. And so in the year 2020, uh, I don't think we're afraid to do anything in the perfume world. Uh, if you have a fragrance like Secretions Magnifique and you have fragrances that are called I Am Trash and you have some of these really weird expressions, then you know what? This was well ahead of its time, honestly. And so I feel like when this one was released, of course, you did have some dark creations out there. We know Amen came out in the mid 90s. And of course, there have been some dark fragrances released in the past. But I feel like this one is still quite modern because of its daringness and its ability to stand out from the crowd and be different. And so with all of that said, my final verdict is Ancre Noir by Lalique still worth it in the year 2020? And the answer to that question is a resounding yes. This fragrance is still absolutely worth it in 2020. With the price in mind, despite the flankers, given the uniqueness and the originality of the formula, this one checks off all of the boxes. This was probably one of the easiest episodes that I've done on a fragrance. And of course, fragrance is subjective. So please keep that in mind going forward. There might be times when, you know, you smell the fragrance and it doesn't cater to your personal taste. And that's totally fine. If you're into the fresher fragrances or you're into some other types of DNAs, then that's all on you. But in my opinion, this is 100% worth it, 1000% worth it in 2020. And I would gladly repurchase as soon as this bottle runs out. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. That was my episode on Is Ancre Noir by Lalique Still Worth It in 2020? Let me know what you think. Do you own this fragrance? Do you prefer any of the flankers over the original? I always love the interaction, so leave a comment down below. And also, please don't forget to subscribe for future videos. If you are a newcomer to this channel, all you have to do is click on the subscribe button in the corner. And this way, whenever I do put out these videos, which is daily, by the way, they will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future content. Thanks again for watching. I love you all, and we'll see you next time. Bye.